What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Planners and Wine. My name is Meg. And I am Myra. Welcome back to yet another week. Yes. Uh, This is our second February episode. We're recording it a little bit earlier than when it drops. So, you know, if anything insane happened in the world or in the planet community, yes, right after we record this, (laughs) we'll cover it on the next pod, okay? (laughs) Or join the Patreon where we talk about stuff in real time. We do. We do. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Because we have uh, Facebook Live. Mm-hmm. Coming up this month, we still have our live episode to do this month. So lots of opportunities to join us in real time, chat with us, have fun with those, us. Those are always just such a blast with our amazing community. Absolutely. And yeah, just the, the Facebook group alone to mm-hmm. where we can talk about stuff in real time. Because yeah, some of these topics I feel like are going to be, they're going to have a moments before y'all even hear this episode, but it's okay. It's okay. I agree. I totally, <laughs> totally agree. And also, we do have a brand new tier on our Patreon. We have a $5 tier. So if you're just somebody who doesn't want to hear the ad and still wants to get the episode a day early on Wednesdays instead of waiting until Thursdays, definitely check out that tier. But then look at the other two for all the bonuses and all the fun stuff that we're doing. And join us over there. Yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people... Uh hit that up. Wait, mm-hmm. they don't get bonuses. Did you say that? I, I would say the other two years. Get oh, other two years. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> like, uh-uh, nothing y'all. for free. <laughs> you got to get on the right one. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I have been seeing a lot of people, not not a lot, but y'all, y'all been, um, I've been seeing people hit up the $5 tier. So maybe that's something that is more up your speed. You don't really mm-hmm. need the extra content. Just, you know, just want to hear us. Or you just want to support here. Yeah, that's too. Give yeah. us a little bit of extra support. That is always mm-hmm. so appreciated. And that's the and easiest way to so do grateful. it. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Myra, how was your week or last couple of weeks? Um, really exciting. Um, just trying to figure out, you know, the uh buy my repeat brand. And it's actually mm-hmm. like really feeling exciting and good which I haven't really felt when it came to content in a long time Mm -hmm. so I'm really really excited so definitely if y'all want to follow along y'all know where to find me yes and definitely follow along with Myra guys she is doing some super super exciting stuff and I feel like it just shows when people are making content and doing things that they are really passionate about like me and Myra were talking earlier and she was like I'm gonna put 100% into this and I'm like you ain't already been putting a hundred percent girl because you've been working. I'm scared to see you at 100%, sis. Like it's got to be crazy. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to see. And that's another thing too. I've been thinking about putting this on my threads, but I've been trying to make a conscious effort of when I see people like really stepping into like, not even just with content or, you know, just, I guess it's with content, just basically, mm-hmm. Instead of being like, oh, I see you doing your thing and keep scrolling, like actually commenting, actually hitting people up in their DMs, mm, like, hey, giving I them see that you. Yeah. Cause sometimes it's all you need. Cause it, you know, unless you like are a controversial creator or something. Yeah. Usually, you know, you get a little sprinkle, sprinkle here and there, but most people are just like kind of lurkers on some things. And it's not, mm-hmm. you know, nothing wrong with that if you are that, but. I just want to kind of put that out there for people I see who are actually trying to do stuff like, hey, I see you and, you know, keep going. You're doing an amazing job. It's important. I think it's very, very important to know for people to know that people are, you know, recognizing them and seeing all their hard work. Like I'm kind of a sucker for when I see like a really small creator, like on TikTok or something like even if I don't watch a full video, I will still like give them like a like if they only mm-hmm. have like two likes or like comment or something like that. Just because I'm like, I don't want you to think that what you're doing doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I want you to know that like somebody out there is watching, even though, even if it's just a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it's important to give people their flowers in real time and like let them know that like what you're doing isn't in vain. Like somebody pays attention, somebody cares, some touching somebody even if it's just like one person yeah yeah for sure if it Mm -hmm. gave me a laugh or you know made me think I've been trying to make that effort especially being a creator as well and knowing how much work goes into putting out something even a 15 second clip like Mm -hmm. it's work that goes behind it so so true trying to be a 
conscious effort. So uh-huh. I suggest that for other people too. But I'm you know, do what it. you want to do. Also, give it to us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can always motivate us. (laughs) Yes. I love the messages in the DMs of people just telling us how much they enjoy the show and Mm -hmm. how the show has helped them or whatever. Just entertain them, make them laugh. Like somebody sent us a message the other day and she was like, this episode was a hot mess. Y'all are so... (laughs) Who (laughs) was Uh, who it was in the DMs. It was in the DMs. I had to go back there on. It was so like she didn't mean like hot mess, like a mess, but like hot mess. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I laughed so hard. No, I time. yeah, I get it. Yeah. And I love that. I love that so much. So yeah, it's just nice to know that you're making a difference, even if it's just a small difference in somebody's day. Um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I have been Just doing some things behind the scenes. I'm back working with Archer and Olive on their Black History Month programming. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show. But that is always so fun. Shout out to Bunny and the whole Archer and Olive team. Um, I just appreciate them so much. And I appreciate their dedication to Black History Month and diversity and inclusion um, on their huge platform. Because especially now that I'm following a lot of journalers on TikTok or seeing a lot of journalers on TikTok, so many people use Archer and Olive journals Mm -hmm. and they have such far reach. And I appreciate them, you know, doing great things with their platform. Obviously not just during Black History Month, but all throughout the year, you see so many different things on their platform. So, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I always love when you are a part of it as well. It's always a good time. And Mm -hmm. I'm glad that they continue to like have that partnership every year with y'all. It's me too. Me too. Um, But yeah, y'all, we're going to get into the episode after this break. Myra, did you want to give anything else to the peeps before we take a quick break? Any reminders? Uh, No. What's going on? Nothing. What's going on this month? I mean, your birthday, but by the time I hear it is. Hey, happy You're birthday late. to me. <laughs> You're late. I know, yeah. <laughs> Feel free to wish me happy birthday as y'all are hearing this. That's totally fine. I am turning 35 this month. I feel so grown. That's why I got on my 1989 sweatshirt. Okay. Uh, Shout out to Taylor Swift for having an album called 1989 because she's wearing 1989 too. Because now I get like all the 1989 merch. Oh, you I know? didn't know that. Yep, exactly. Oh, so Very she's special year. too, or will be. She will know. be. Okay. Her birthday is at the end of the year, I believe. I think it's in December. Oh. That's at the beginning. So yeah, uh, it's my birthday month. I love February, Black History Month, Blackity Black Black. Um, Meg Thee Stallion is also an Aquarius, born in February. Um, you know, I just love that for us. Young Miami. I can, I can go on. Of all the icons that are Aquarius. But y'all can Google it. Y'all can Google it. (laughs) Well, shout out to y'all. And whoever is listening that it's y'all birthday season. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, y'all, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. All right, y'all. So we are back. And first things first, we have to talk about Go Wild Dallas. Um, Wild from Lanners is sponsoring this episode. Shout out to the team over there. Shout out to Jeanette. And I just cannot, again, I'm in shock at how close we are to Go Wild. Have you done anything to prepare for this at this point, Myra? Like what you what you got going on? Let me know. Absolutely not. I have thoughts. That's only preparation I've done. I'm trying to think. Like I have, I've actually, I've started planning out some content ideas. Oh, period. There Um, we go. That's something. But you know, clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what? I just started uh, searching for some pajamas for playing Jamma. Oh yeah. I didn't have much luck. Um, cause I don't even know really what I'm going for. I'm just going for something cute and comfy all the time, but I really want something really cute this year. Um, so I started looking, I didn't really find anything. So that is what I am currently on the hunt for is some planned JAMA pajamas. I actually think that I'm going to go full Texas, stereotypical uh-huh. Texas. I'm sorry to the Texans. I'm from Ohio. So I, yeah, I'm definitely. You know nothing else. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> And so what does that mean? You're going to wear a cowboy hat? You're going to have a horse Mm -hmm. on your pajamas? Like, what is it giving? 
Um, I don't really like animals on my clothes. Yeah. So maybe if I do have something on my pajamas, it'd probably be like cowboy boots or something. Okay. Um, because I'm just not a fan of like unless it's the print. I'm not a fan of yeah. actual animal, you know. Right, right, right. On my clothes. But um, yeah. um, but I can't like cow print, I no, I couldn't do yeah. that either. But um I know a lot of the girls probably is gonna go the Barbie route because you know Barbie had the icon. Barbie is huge right now. Yeah. Yes, that's true. But I kind of want to like, should I take this opportunity to like lean into my hobby, you know, the one that I don't monetize or talk about for real. <laughs> and so <laughs> something that's like a like that Barbie but Slytherin kind of hybrid. Mm. I've been having that floating around in my mind. That could be but interesting. Yeah. Just thoughts, and I know nobody else will have it. So you know what? That and I'm also shocked that you have never pulled out any like Harry Potter pajamas at Plan Jamma. Because at the last Plan Jamma, you were onto Harry Potter, right? In 2023. Um, yeah, that? but the ones that I found were um, either like a onesies or very much fleece, mm, which is too mm, hot for. It's too yeah. hot. Pro so. tip: Don't wear anything fleece to Plan Jamma, even if the room is well ventilated. You're still gonna get very hot if you're on the mm -hmm. dance floor, like we are. Yeah. Yeah, so, if you're just a chill person, by all means, do you the, might be fine. Yeah, do the onesie mm -hmm. or whatever. But but we're not chill. Mm -mm, Plan Jamma not. at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sweating fools. That onesie that I wore the first time. Oh my god, girl, you was hot. You, I, think I don't think I've like worn that since. Yeah, you was like, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. Yeah, you had on like a tank under it, and I think you like mm -hmm. pulled down the top. Yeah, of it, and just yeah. had like the tank on the top, and then the pants on the bottom because you was hot. I remember that. Never I remember. Again. Yeah, and even last year, I think I had on like some pajama pants and a t shirt, and I was still hot. So, yeah, I was burning up still. It, yeah. mm -hmm. it does. It does. But we be doing too much and drinking a lot. But yeah, anyway, that's um, that's a great pro tip, guys. Don't wear anything fleece. You have any other, listen, because we're talking about Plan Jamma, any other Plan Jamma specific pro tips that, that the people gonna need for, for this go wild? Um, speak to whoever you wanted to speak to is your last chance that's the thing um, plan jamma is so bittersweet yeah, it is bittersweet and okay. i feel like plan jamma is also like the most liquid courage too like don't it be drunk is. don't be drunk in people's face please don't that's another <laughs> we I had our, our share of drunk people like forever please don't do that but know your limit know your limit <laughs> yeah is absolutely a pro tip yeah it's an open bar mm -hmm. um the bar lines get very long that is a pro tip um, if you get to the front of the bar, maybe go ahead and get your first and your second drink together so you don't have to top Yeah, the it will be a line for sure. But also know your limits and mm -hmm. don't be doing the absolute most in embarrassing, being embarrassing. <laughs> and just have so, fun, like get on the dance fun. floor. Um mm -hmm. we will be there for mm -hmm. sure. I think um it takes a few people crazy people like us to be on the dance floor to like mm -hmm. have everybody else feel comfortable to come, but yeah. You know, come and have fun. Yep. Um, d is it like after parties or stuff afterwards, technically? I like, think usually so. we kind of hang outside of like the room. Yeah, where that outside of, of the room. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, a lot of people like took over the hotel's bar that was yeah. upstairs. Um, so that was a whole thing, though. There are a lot of hangouts because Plan Gemma ends pretty early, it ends at like 10 mm -hmm. o'clock, which is my, my main gripe. I wish we got an extra hour. <laughs> I do so that's another thing don't get the plan jamma too late or you're gonna miss the, like it that three hours flies by so don't be rolling in at 8 30 9 o'clock and you only got an hour left like you yeah. you're gonna be sad so i don't i don't think plan jamma is not the type of party that get there late because it's gonna end it's gonna end so get there on time or at least no later than maybe like 7 30 7 45 something like that so you can actually have time to enjoy it Line up early so you ain't in the back yeah. of that drink line. <laughs> that's a good girl. I that's agree. A great tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does take some time, but but yeah, yep. talk to you want to talk to because it will be the last chance. Yeah, take the photos. It's the and last have your chance. Fun. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe uh, next episode we'll give some pro tips for um the 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 welcome party for the karaoke party. Oh well, mm -hmm. J Bay. Make sure you can be. <laughs> That's the thing. If Jason's not there, we'll have to wrap. pivot. Yeah. Yeah, we got to pivot. 
absolutely absolutely but yeah we'll talk about that on the next episode um we're so excited to see some of you guys at go wild we actually have a giveaway going on by the time y'all hear this i'm so sorry it's gonna be over winter's mm-hmm. gonna be announced and everything but um we were able to partner with the wild team and give away two tickets to go wild dallas and man the girls want them tickets bad 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 Real bad. Bad, bad so i'm excited to real see bad wins. yeah mm-hmm. yeah this is gonna be so so exciting to see who wins and um thank y'all for the love and support on all of that too mm-hmm. um but yeah we're, we're really excited and hopefully we can arrange something to where yep. you know we get a photo or at least or something yeah. that'd be really cool for sure for sure um, all right, so let's get into some of the pop culture things going on. So UMG United Music Group has removed their music from TikTok. Now I told y'all we are recording this um in the past. So if by the time this episode comes out, UMG and TikTok has struck a deal, I'm so happy for them. But at the <laughs> date of this recording, they have not. <laughs> so that's why we're gonna talk about it. Yes. What think when you initially heard about this going on and like how do you think this is going to be resolved if it's resolved and who does it really hurt I feel like there are just so many different things to like think about when it comes to this this thing because we've never seen it before I don't think I've ever seen a social media company not have access to so many artists music not that I can remember at least yeah I mean when I initially heard it it was like you know kind of it hasn't it didn't go through yet. So I was thinking like, oh, they'll, they'll strike some kind of deal. Cause I mean, now like the way people aren't listening to the radio, like we're finding new music through social media, through TikTok, through trends that happen on TikTok. So it would really hurt, you know, the music company and the artists True. under those labels to pull everything from there. Um, So I figured that was going to come to some agreement, but when it did get pulled, I was like, oh, Okay, like, so how is this going to work? Like, right. who's going to, you know, compromise first? Because mm-hmm. I feel like the music company is kind of at the mercy of TikTok because of the way that the the world is right now. Like, where else are we going to find music? Especially for those smaller artists. Like, Drake, is mm-hmm. it Taylor on there too? Yeah, like, yeah. They'll be, they'll be fine, you know? But, like, mm-hmm. these smaller artists who really depend on places like TikTok, mm-hmm. like that is really going to hurt them. So I'm I'm curious to see who's going to compromise first. Yeah, I, I think that's such a great point because I feel like the record labels and the record companies, they need TikTok more than TikTok needs them. Because mm-hmm. since this happened, I haven't seen any less TikTok. Like the TikToks are still coming. Like, you know, creators are still making TikToks. They're finding creative ways to not need the music. And honestly, the dance um things that go on on TikTok, that haven't even been as prevalent as it was a couple of years ago. I think had this happened in like 2020 or something, this maybe would have really hurt TikTok. But now mm. I feel like TikTok is just so much more than just a platform for, you know, dance chains and stuff yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. So, and I saw a creator, he made a really interesting video um, talking about this. And he was saying that like the record company or UMG, they are being pretty short-sighted and like kind of greedy because like you said, like this really hurts them more than it hurts TikTok. If they need TikTok, TikTok does not need them. TikTok has been such a huge platform for all artists to have their music like just go crazy. Like even super popular artists like Taylor Swift and Drake, you know what I'm saying? Like so much of their music has just gone crazy on TikTok. And it's interesting to see TikTok having issue. I mean, UMG having issues with TikTok over streaming money and stuff when we know that so many artists have had issues with you know different like spotify and different platforms yeah. like that over their streaming rights and and money and things and also with their record labels about the streaming so now it's like the record labels are getting it but i don't think the record labels are are hurting for this money i'm not saying that i don't know maybe they can come to some type of agreement that makes sense but the record labels and stuff really need TikTok more than TikTok needs them. So, you know, I feel like TikTok called their bluff and was like, do it, take it. And they did it. And TikTok is still fine. <laughs> TikTok ain't hurting as far as I see. Yeah. You know? I mean, I yeah, that's that's the thing. I don't know if it's a situation where the record label is being greedy or if the mm-hmm. record... I, I bet it's the record label being greedy more so than <laughs> yeah. trying to get more money in the artist's pockets. 
but um Girl. it just sucks because it's like it's truly hurting these smaller artists the in the grand scheme of things so yeah yeah, yeah that's i've been seeing a lot of like no label like independent artists like try to put their stuff out and it's it seems awesome. to be popping off but hopefully that works for them but that, yeah. that also kind of seems a little shitty too that they are like well since you can't listen to these other artists, here's my hey, stuff. They get said, it it's, a, it's an opportunity. <laughs> Y'all can't listen to these other huge artists, so come listen to me. You know, they're just taking advantage of the opportunity. Like, I'm sure any record label who isn't under UMG is probably using this opportunity to really push their artists a lot, too, because yeah. it's not every artist. It's only um, a select few. So mm, it's really interesting. I think that the record labels or UMG is going to bend first. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, I think TikTok might give them an extra crumb or two. TikTok is not going to give them like a super meaningful amount because I don't feel like TikTok really is that pressed about it. But we'll see. We will see. Um, we might be wrong, but we'll we'll see what happens with that. But mm. yeah, I just hope it's it it, it resolves quickly. Mm hmm. But have you missed the music on tiktok i really follow like you said like yeah. I, for me tiktok I, most of the stuff i see don't really have music involved anyway so yeah comedy or some type of education whether mm -hmm. it's like you know makeup to try yeah. or whatever things like that those are the two primary reasons that i'm on tiktok and the main content that i get from it you know the dance stuff is just like the cute oh that's cute keep scrolling I hardly I even see it. them anymore, mm -hmm. honestly, because yeah, I just don't consume it. And I was like, oh, will I have to like go through my my catalog of stuff? I think maybe one TikTok at yeah. all the stuff I posted, like said it was muted. And I was like, it's from two years ago. I don't give a fuck. So I because <laughs> I don't even make content with like that type of music on it for real. Yeah. So. And I'm I'm assuming that if they do strike some type of a uh, deal and the music comes back, then they'll just put it back on those TikTok without so. people yeah. having to do because there are a lot there are some creators that it's music on every single one of their videos and so yeah like that one guy yeah. that like tells you where the samples come from like his mm. whole account like he <laughs> in shambles over there <laughs> just as for him I know oh. like he be that's educational like I would it see is. that but it is dang that sucks for him but yeah, yeah, we actually heard him talk for the first time because of this. So you know what? And a lot of things have been happening because I follow a lot of like I well, I follow this particular creator. I think his name is Joe. And he makes like uh movie reviews and stuff. It's his primary sort of like content. And so like during like the writers and the actor strike, he had to pivot his content like a lot because I mean that was mm, his primary yeah. content. But he did it, he did it with a smile on his face and he made it work. So I think I think uh the other dude would be all right, but it does suck. It does suck for him. Uh, that's a mm, that's a thing too. Making your content around like entertainment solely, yeah, kind of wild in that way. In that way, because I mean, yeah. this is kind of entertainment too. But like, we can yeah. talk about whatever. We you know? have so much. And yeah, he has a very small like niche yeah. of what he can talk about. So yeah, it's tricky. Diversify yourself. Mm -hmm. Have more than one niche and, and keep diversifying. Yep. Well. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> just saying, there's more to you than that. There's more to you than that. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, we'll see. That is a really interesting uh situation, and I'm I'm very interested to see how it gets resolved. But you remember when TikTok was supposed to get banned um in the United States when well, that was like a big thing, and then like it just kind of went out with a whimper. They made such a big deal about TikTok potentially getting banned, and then like nothing happened. Maybe this will be bad. Yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. that is this. Because at the end of the day, is money. TikTok mm -hmm. won't go nowhere because it makes too much money. That's true. Um, yep. Now, this little clip, it, is it on the show notes? Because you know I'd be skipping it. That little clip of that senator, because I think all of the like the TikTok and meta CEOs, <sighs> I'm just now realizing that was recent. And yeah. not from back in the day when he came what? the first time? Yes. Yeah, so the clip, um, I don't know what you're talking about, where he was asking uh, the CEO of TikTok, mm -hmm. like, where was he from? And I think he's from Singapore. Uh, Which is not, not China. Mistaken. It's not China. And he kept on being asking him all these different questions about China. And he mm -hmm. was like, I'm not from there. <laughs> and it wasn't clicking. Like, do you have dual citizenship? 
Have you ever been like I'm not from there? Like he that's just, just pure Asian. Racism. Yeah, and he was like, "You got to be Chinese. I don't care what you say. You got to have some type of ties to China, which is wild, embarrassing. I mean, as if America could get any more embarrassing. But like, are you for real? Like, I, you really thought she was doing something with that? Like, you made yourself look dumber and dumber and so dumb. even more racist. So dumb. Literally. But that's what y'all run off of. So I mean, maybe. Exactly. He got props for that, but... It's very wild. It's like looking at us and being like, so what do y'all think about the South African apartheid? <laughs> not, not there, <laughs> but it was bad. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like, what? <laughs> I know the CEO of TikTok is sick of us. They sick. And I don't blame yeah. them. I'm sick of us too. <laughs> I'm sick of them too. Like, why are they still putting this man through this? Y'all not going to be in TikTok. Like, give it a rest. Like, too many... Corporate entity entities in the United States make way too much money from TikTok. Mm -hmm. Like, cut it out. Because, like, TikTok has helped not only the music industry, it's helped the beauty industry. It's helped so many industries with their products going viral, music going viral. Like, it's a whole ecosystem. And it's yeah. too many important people who got their hand in the cookie jar for, for that to, for anything meaningful to happen to them. Like, come on. Come on. And so as soon as TikTok start donating to any of these people campaign, they're gonna get real quiet. So they need to cut it out. Well. Okay. So oh, I hate America politics. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Oh it's my embarrassing. god. Yep. Okay. So this story was so hilarious to me. Have you heard about Demi Lovato's recent performance at the American Heart Association? <laughs> I did watch that video. <laughs> so if anybody is Why? not aware of this situation, Demi Lovato recently performed at a um, function for the American Heart Association. And the whole purpose was to raise awareness about, um, you know, deadly cardiovascular ailments. Right. She sang. she has a song called Heart Attack and she decided to sing it to people who had had heart attacks. <laughs> It's not funny, but it's like, are you for real right she now? She's that serious. She, but here's the thing. <laughs> apparently, I didn't see this part, but apparently before she started singing, she explained her choice of the song, but it really didn't make it. It, it didn't make it any less tone deaf. Um, let me see if it if it has it in this article. Um, she spoke about the mind heart connection. It was a sensitive moment intended to champion the women in the room. The very reason why Demi was at the event. She did open with a beautiful intro on why she chose the song and addressed the room, talking about the mind and heart connection. Some huh? woo woo. That's this very woo woo explanation. Yeah, I, I don't. Just say you wanted to sing Heart Attack. Because that was one of her biggest songs. But it was just weird. She didn't have to sing it. And here's the thing. She has another song called, I think, Heart or Break or something like that. Like, give me, let me give you a heart or break. She could have sang that, that. I think it would have been better than singing yeah, maybe and literally it's not saying as Heart Attack. I love Heart or Break. That's one of my favorites. Mm. That is my favorite. Demi Lovato. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't have been better. Does she, she just, have any, like, inspirational type songs anyway? Yes. Like, most, which... That's not popular. popular. Yeah. But I'm sure yeah, she's not popular. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Uh yeah, I don't understand what, what was going on with, with Demi with that song choice. I think she should have just steered cleared of any of her music that was related. So I cause I heard like some people loved it and it and some people was like, uh, so it had very, very mixed reactions. If I'm doing something where I'm not sure that the majority or all the people in the room are gonna be with it, especially when it comes to something as sensitive as people's health. I would have just not. I would have just steered clear. She could have just steered clear of her heart attack song. It's the heart attack specifically that I'm just like, why did you? Yeah. 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 Is it sorry? Yeah. Not sorry. That's isn't that her song? Um, I think Is she that did something Demi? like that. I think. I'm not sure. I feel like that one would have been better. Yeah, that's Demi. That would have been um a better choice. Yeah. So I feel like it's a song about, you know, mm -hmm. moving on, prospering. Yeah. That's, the point that's is, popular. She had other music that she could have did. I she just simply wanted to sing Heart Attack. 
Yeah. Because I, I think she is, thought it was going to have a different impact given her little... And now, I think it would have been worse had she not given any type of context to why she chose the song, but to know that, like, even her context was just very, very just not... Mm-mm. I don't, I don't understand the intended impact, but yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Choices. I don't think, I don't think sure. this is a big deal at all, but I just thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's like when you are like, like you're trying to make something into the acronym, and you're like fixing words to fit the letters or whatever. This is mm-hmm. that's the vibe that it's getting like. She yeah. wanted to sing a song that had heart in it. So she tried to make the mover around it and give this inspirational speech at the beginning that just didn't make sense. I, I still, I stand by that she should have sang her song, Let Me Give Your Heart a Break. Because that's talking about giving your heart a break, letting your heart rest, mm-hmm. letting your heart chill. You know what I'm saying? That's better than I'm going to have a heart attack or whatever her lyrics are. Yeah. <laughs> It does say I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> Girl. Over a relationship with that. Girl. Oh my gosh. People are dying, Demi. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> love Demi Lovato, but that was not it. That was yeah. not it. That was a choice for sure. Um, hey, the next thing is I feel like by the time y'all hear this. This interview is going to be out and we mm-hmm. will have our reactions to the interview on the next episode. Um, again, if you want to hear it in real time, join the Patreon. We will absolutely be talking about it over there way sooner mm-hmm. than the next episode is coming out. But anyway, if you can wait, we will talk about it then. But Monique, the Monique, is coming to Club Shay Shay. If y'all don't know, that is Shannon Sharp's uh, podcast. That is the same podcast where he had the explosive interview with Cat Williams. And now he is about to be talking to Monique. And mm-hmm. Oprah is somewhere screaming, crying, throwing up. Because you already know Monique don't see it for Oprah at all. If you know, you know. And Monique will she gonna tell it. She gonna tell it. I mean, and Club Mon- Shay Shay is just becoming the place where people who have quote unquote been blackballed. Ooh. You know, air their they grievances. They go to tell it. Yeah, they go to tell it. Mm. Uh, I mean, who, know? who knew? And one thing about Monique, she might tell you a story, but she ain't gonna tell you a lie. I mean, that's cat too, for real. Period. <laughs> she definitely, she definitely tells the stories in that podcast. She definitely tells the story. Three thousand books, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I am very, very, very excited. I wonder is she going to. Um, talk about what Taraji P. Henson has been talking about lately Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, Black actors getting what is owed to them and what is fair to them because it is just so... The the playing field is just so uneven. It's crazy that people who are as seasoned and been working as long and as hard as people like Taraji P. Henson or Monique are still having to fight and have these conversations when, you know, there are... People in the acting field, primarily, you know, white actors who don't even got to, you know, raise their hand to get what they deserve. You know what I'm saying? It's just so uneven. It's not to take anything away from them or their hard work. It's just saying that, like, the playing field is not fair. The playing field is not fair. And, like, I don't know if you saw this, but a couple weeks ago, um, there's an actor whose name is very similar to Tom Holland. It's like Tom Hollander or something like that. He's like an older man. Mm. And he came out and said that he accidentally got Tom Holland's bonus check for Spider-Man or whatever one of the movies that he did was. And he said it was such an outrageous amount. A bonus check. And this is probably, we don't know the amount, but this is probably the amount of money that Taraji P. Henson has never made. And this is just his bonus. Yeah. That's the problem. Stuff like that is a problem. You know, not take anything away from Tom Holland or whatever and what he's done, but come on. Yeah, it's an issue. And mm-hmm. I mean, M- Monique won an Oscar and that is supposed mm-hmm. to be the goal that you hit to, you know, skyrocket your, yep, your career. And it just ceiling. did not happen mm-hmm. for her. Nope. Nope. Which is wild. I think Taraji wow. has won the Oscar too, right? If I'm not she mistaken. was definitely nominated. nominated. She okay. was nominated for her role in Benjamin Button that she got like 
I think she got like half a million dollars for that, which is not a small amount of money. But when you think about the fact that Brad Pitt got like $10 million for mm -hmm. that exact same movie and she got half a million. Also, like, it's Crazy. not a half a million going into her pocket either. That's the thing. So, you that's know, it's thing. a lot of people, managers, yeah. stylists, all this stuff that's getting a cut to on top of taxes. So She's not clearing half yeah. a million dollars no. now for an Oscar-nominated role. And to be fair, he's not clearing ten million, but he's clearing a hell of a lot, a hell more lot more than she is. That's yeah. his starting point, <laughs> yeah. you know, for sure. So, yeah, I think Monique is gonna absolutely bring it, and she's gonna talk about the elephant in the room in a big mm -hmm. way because she she don't mess around. She she gonna get to it, and I think this is the perfect venue for her to do it because I, one of the things I actually like about Club Shay Shay is that Shannon, for the most part. He lets his guests talk and get it out, mm -hmm. and he don't he don't do too much to take away from that. So yeah, and I, I think that that's what works with his podcast. Like he's not mm -hmm. this journalist, you know, interview yeah. type person. Like mm -hmm. he's kind. It's just more conversational. Yes, exactly. So and it just exactly. works for this type of settings in the guests that he has. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yep. So I'm excited. Like I said, hopefully by the time this comes out, um, we will have the interview and we will absolutely be talking about it very, very soon because I think it's going to be explosive. It might break the internet. It might. We've had a lot of internet breaking moments in 2024 already. Like already. I've been working. I'm already working on our 2024 recap podcast and just writing mm -hmm. down the big things that happened. And January is stacked. So February, well, January February was like February. 30 years in itself. So no, it literally was 84 years oh, long. <laughs> well, okay. it, was, it was super long. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Me too. Me too. Uh, next thing I wanted to quickly touch on was uh, Sally Beauty. Um, in their acknowledgement of Black History Month, they put out, uh, you know what? Let's talk, let you talk about this because you know you were the one who brought this to my attention. So let's come on, come on with it. Let's tell us about it. Oh, uh, okay. So a shout out to TikTok, which of course isn't a, you know a music sharing platform anymore. This is where I get my news. But I was scrolling on TikTok. I see this at the point I see it. The ad's already taken down. By the way, Sally took down the ad. So it was a stitch of this young woman who's doing what I'm assuming is like some UGC type content. If y'all yeah. not familiar, it's content that basically a brand gets to put their label on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's not on her profile. And that's important for the story. So she's trying out this um, new flat arm for her hair. She has very coarse, forcey hair, very, mm -hmm. very curly. Um, and she just takes a patch of her hair. And put it through the flat iron, which if you don't have 4C hair, this doesn't seem like a real big deal to you. Right. However, right. when you have 4C black curly hair, there is certain preparations that you have to do before you even get yeah. to the flat iron. So obviously her just taking a chunk of hair and putting the flat iron to it, um, had her hair sticking out, you know, Rick and Morty style, like just a little stiff, yeah, a little, a little stiff, stiff, yeah, you know, defying yeah. gravity, yeah. and it's sizzled, which is not a good sign. Not a good sign. You don't at all. want your hair to be sizzling mm -hmm. when you're flat ironing it, whatever mm -hmm. hair type you don't want it to be sizzling, yeah. But, um, sis hyped this thing up like it was the best thing since sliced bread, <laughs> and Sally was like, you know, it's Black History Month. We don't know how your hair work. This looks fine. You seem fine with it. We're going to put it on the ad. And um, Black people said hell to the night. <laughs> <laughs> and quickly, Sally must have took it down. Because by the time I seen the... The, the um, original is yeah, gone. Yeah, it was gone. Long gone. Which I appreciate the prompt response yeah. to that. And I appreciate that they didn't just do nothing whack, like just turning off the comments and just still just let in the video. Yeah. Stay I mean, well, up. the other comments are off, but yeah. But they did at least take the video. <laughs> the down. girls was like, no, we're going to your other <laughs> We're going videos. to your other video. Y'all hear about this. <laughs> yeah, that was a it's wild egregious. way to, yeah. to start um, Black History Month. And this is absolutely nothing against that creator at yeah. all like i'm glad to see like 
because I, I don't even know who she was. Like you said, it was UGC, so her name was not attached to. So I, if this time, we don't even know who the creator is. In any of the comments I've been seeing, most of them have not been directed towards her. Is mm -hmm. more so directed towards Sally for just being very tone deaf and just not knowing black hair. Because like you said, like her hair was not prepped at all no. to be straightened. It was in its very natural state. And hell, even if you got 3C hair, it's still not going to straighten as well as it could be if it was prepped properly, but especially having 4C hair. Like you need to yeah. have blow dried it or put heat protectant and all those things on it to get the best um, outcome. Yeah. And so the fact that they saw that and thought that that was a great ad for that straightener that straightener is canceled <laughs> the straightener oh yeah, is absolutely canceled. yeah. Like, i wouldn't even consider buying that straightener because it's just the lack of care that was put into that whole ad is just and like i said not directed towards a creator because we don't know what her circumstances are or how she is yeah what the deliverables that were she made that yeah, yeah exactly yeah. but Sally, y'all are literally a beauty company. Y'all don't know shit about black hair. Ain't nobody in the room to be like, oh, that's no. actually, that's not, that's not how, when nobody in the room. Come to find out, they've gotten rid of some of their more, I hate to say ethnic hair care, because that grinds my gears when I see that in the store. Yeah. But they label. have gotten mm -hmm. rid of those. So, like the, I can't like even some think of the of brands, like Shea some Moisture, of the brands, Shea so Moisture, maybe not yeah. that one in particular. But yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. they've recently got there. gotten rid of those in the store. So oh, I hadn't been to a Sally's in a while. So I yeah, because that. it's not catered towards black hair. It's not. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but not. I will say this was absolutely hilarious to me, and I will be thinking about this for the rest of February. Yeah. Black History for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because anybody who has had their hair silk press, they know that that's not that's not it. That's not if if I get a silk press and that's how my hair look, I'm I I need a refund expeditiously, or I'm probably gonna slap somebody. I mean, <laughs> like you tried it. If it wasn't on Sally's page, I would have mm -hmm. thought it was satire. Yeah, I, I would have yeah. thought that somebody was playing the joke yeah. because, I mean, she was so hype about the sizzle. She said, "Look at she that was. steam." Like, ma'am, mm -hmm. your flotticles are burning off of your head. Your That's not are on fire. <laughs> wow. Was the silk press in the room with us? Oh, because it wasn't nothing silken about that press at all. I it feel like not. her hair probably was even still wet. It, it could have been. It could have been. I mean, been. I, obviously, we weren't in the room, but I mean, and knowing maybe, black hair, that's how it looks like freshly washed, basically. That's true. That's true. And you know what? Maybe that's because they do have straighteners nowadays that claim that you're supposed to be able to sh skip the blow drying step mm. and straighten wet hair, which I will never trust anything like Absolutely that. It not. just sounds yeah. crazy to me. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that is how that straightener was. But again, like a product like that is not going to work on most uh black hair textures and especially not for C hair it's just not gonna work at all yikes on bikes sally sally oh. said happy black history month here y'all go happy black history month she must know what she's doing she black when are these brands gonna learn to get somebody black in the room like if you don't have nobody black on your team why are you making any type of black content because you clearly don't care you you want people to think you care, but if there's nobody black on your team like helping to make these decisions, you You're don't actually get exposed. care. Yeah, you don't yeah. actually care, and it's gonna come yeah. out exactly. Yeah, because yeah, the only way that this could have happened is either the person in the room doesn't have the authority to speak up about it or feel safe mm -hmm. enough to speak out about it, or there is nobody in the room. Yeah. Because if you know, hell, even curly hair. Mm -hmm. Let alone definitely black hair. That mm -hmm. that whole video would have been unacceptable. Unacceptable. And you, you know what? I think that Sally's low key because of the situation. It strikes me as the type of company to like brag about their diversity numbers when the majority of their diversity is on the retail level, like as in store employees. And there's like yeah. zero diversity when you get into like the corporate level of the people who right. are actually making these type of decisions. And that's not given. Mm -mm. That's not given what y'all think it's given at all. And we can see it. We can tell. So. Oh, they love to do that too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the warehouse. 
fifty percent PLC for it's the fun. Not the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> they love to do that. They, they want to count those about, numbers in. Right. They don't want to talk about the corporate numbers. They don't want to talk about that though. Ooh, the people actually yeah. in charge. I can't. I can't. Mm. Mm-mm. Um, but yeah, last thing before we take a quick break, we have to talk about the biggest thing going on on social media as we're recording this is fumbling the Keith Lee effect and how unfortunately. In one of my favorite cities, Dallas, Texas, this has happened. Um, if anybody is not aware of Keith Lee, hop on TikTok and just do a quick Google. But basically, he's a food foodie person, and he goes to restaurants and gives a review. And because of his popularity online and just how wholesome and real he 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 is, mm-hmm. um, those those restaurants blow up. Like he has really brought a lot of attention, much needed attention to a lot of very small restaurants who really needed the help and has really changed a lot of people's lives. I mean, restaurants will literally go from nobody being there all day to lines around the corner. And it lasts well after uh, Keith Lee has been there. So that is his, that is the Keith Lee effect. Keith Lee visited a, a food truck in Dallas called Sweetly Seasoned. And Myra, do you want to talk about <laughs> what happened? I'm trying to figure out how to sum it up quickly, and I'm not good at that. You're really good at summing stuff up quickly. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I You're very concise. Um, You're a very concise speaker. <laughs> so all of this, by the way, is caught in 4K. It's recorded. He goes to the truck. If you're familiar with Keith Lee, you know how he does. He always uses like this really large tip. So when he pulls up to this truck, he sees somebody's cutting hair, somebody's braiding hair. Yeah. You know, and they're close. Like mm-hmm. it's if anybody walked up, you would think like, oh, they must be working together. Right. Get things done. And like he said, this is in the hood. This is stuff mm-hmm. that happens in the hood, you know. No yeah. like shade or anything. It's just mm-hmm. it is, it what, is it what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's like, hey. I did a review. I want to tip you 2000 as the owner. He's talking to the owner. And also um, the girl was helping her. Was she the one doing hair? The girl that was helping her? She hair? is a hairstylist. I believe she was doing hair, but she was also helping with the food truck. She even had Absolutely. a food truck yeah. t-shirt on and mm-hmm. she was helping promote it online because she actually has a decent following yeah. on social media. So she was like going live and stuff, helping to have people come. Actually, begging for Keith Lee to come specifically is what her and her son and like various yeah. people were doing online. Yeah. Which, you know, mm-hmm. he's in the area and he, mm-hmm. he came. So he tipped the owner 2000 he said he's mm-hmm. going to give a thousand to the hair braider to help mm-hmm. out, you know, with doing hair there. He wants to yep. give a thousand to the barber to help out and give out free haircuts. Yep. Divvy it up how you how you want to. AKA give them the money. Like yeah, because he's like paying a, on the credit card, obviously, because yes, who has five thousand dollars in cash? Money. Yeah. Yes, not distribute the amount as you see fit, but to distribute what I'm telling you mm-hmm. how to distribute it, how you see fit, whether it's cash out, demo, cash, whatever yeah. you want to do, that's what we'll say. And it's on And it's very clear. It is, yes, it is. I mean, this man broke it down, like who gets what. Yeah. It is very clear. Um, unfortunately, um, the owner was like, Yeah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Yeah. And she decided she was going to keep the money. Oh, also, we forgot. He gave an extra $800 for the food truck to give out plates so, to people. Yeah, until the 800 ran out. Yeah, until that money ran yeah. out. She gave three plates. And then said, and start said charging, charging, people. charging people. Once yeah. he was gone. Absolutely. Once he was long gone, yeah. Yeah, and then she didn't want. She decided to keep the entire $4,000. Well, mm-hmm. she gave 1000 to her son initially and was like, Distributed as you see fit, yeah. which is give the money to his because these people were his the, her son's friends. friends. Yeah, give them some of that rather than giving them the two thousand that Keith Lee had specified to be given to them. Yes, and the young lady who yeah. was helping her and also was doing hair was said, "Hey, keep mm-hmm. my thousand. I just want to know how you're going to give my you know my brother who was the guy that was cutting hair. Yeah, his thousand. Which fair? I mean, she yeah. still come up on a thousand dollars. Right, right, right. Really." A thousand eight hundred because she barely gave out any free food. Mm-hmm. But she said that you know she stood on her horse. She stood on business on that and said, "No, I'm going to keep it. 
if Keith Lee tell me something different, I'll do something different, which he literally told you what to do with the money. Oh, true. Uh, so this thing just kind of blew up. And yeah. finally, Keith Lee did his Keith Lee thing. So classy. So classy. I could never. He even still got the video up last time I checked. Yeah. Like his original review, giving them props and stuff. He still mm -hmm. has that up. So he's not petty at all. But he's yeah. like, this is what y'all need to know. And he yeah. spelled it out very well. Yeah. And he made it abundantly clear that he meant divvy the money up versus like cash, check, mm -hmm. zeal, however you want to do. Yeah. Not like pay whoever. Decide. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... I, too it's bad. sad because this lady obviously fumbled the bag, did not have the Keith Lee effect. People did Actually, not show up. It's the reverse Keith Lee effect. Reverse Keith Lee. She yeah. has been getting, she probably has less customers now than she did before this happened. And she was struggling before Yeah, she was struggling before it happened. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we talked about this off the air a lot. It just came down to she seen that money hit and it probably was the most she's ever seen in her business. Mm -hmm. If and ever she let, she let greed, she let greed take, take over, take over. Mm -hmm. cause yep. I mean, simply everybody's like with the Keith Lee effect, you could have gave all you really had to come off was the thousand. You I wouldn't have got away if not giving away free plates. Yeah, yeah. She wouldn't have blasted you for that if you didn't mm -hmm. play with her brother, honestly. So all mm -hmm. you had to do is come off a thousand, and you could have made that tenfold by the customers that would. I know Keith is always like, I can't promise everything. People will show up if Keith yeah. Lee say, "Hi, Keith, something's over a seven. Mm -hmm. They're coming. People was coming before he left. Yeah, he said they people were coming in drones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 because it was like four people on live, so people were aware that he was there, so they were pulling up. And right. like he said, that whole interaction seemed longer than what it was. They probably mm -hmm. was there for like five minutes because yeah. people were coming. Yeah. So I don't know. At the end yeah. of the day, this lady was just. She just seen dollar signs. Yeah. And she really stood on it until she could not stand on it anymore. And yeah. Because she made videos and yeah. stuff being really just snotty and nasty. Massive, aggressive you know, yeah. yeah, saying that they could come get their money and trying to explain it away as a misunderstanding. And that's what her son tried to do. And it's like, no, it wasn't a misunderstanding. Like, you this were very, very greedy and you fair. thought that you could do something shitty and get away with it. And you didn't. And honestly, I'm glad that she didn't even attempt to do the right thing when this initially happened because we just never would have known. And, you know, Keith Lee supporters would have been supporting this very greedy, selfish yeah, person. She, really and really she, came up. Yeah, she honestly she, just yeah. didn't deserve to have the mm -hmm. Keith Lee effect. I think after this, I wouldn't be surprised if Keith Lee started vetting like people and businesses a little bit better because this is crazy. It's crazy that that woman couldn't just take because he did not he paid for his food so the four thousand eight hundred dollars that she got was not even for his food at all it was literally just a tip because mm -hmm. he always tips huge like that because he knows he has it and he's just the type of person who wants to give it and help people and be a blessing to people you know what I'm saying? he knows that his presence alone is going to help them out yeah yeah but he was like I, he wants to help them in real time too and it just sucks that she couldn't take that blessing for what it was i mean she got twenty eight hundred dollars you know what i'm saying yeah. like she could have just took that and just be done with it and give those people their money. But no, she thought that she's about to do something shitty and get away with it. And she, she was wrong. She was very, very wrong. Yeah. So yeah, it sucks. Yeah. And like people, he said in his, uh, like follow up video, like clearly that business has a lot of things to work out mm -hmm. outside of marketing. Um, there's a reason why, this all transpired. There's a reason why she yeah. was struggling. And it's probably not just marketing. Obviously, the food's good, so it's not the food. Yeah. She just may have a shit attitude. Mm, that's what it is. And getting. sometimes it's just about your attitude. Yeah, that's true. That's like she true. felt very entitled to the money. Mind you, this money is extra. It's, it's a tip. Extra. It's not yeah. for the food. You didn't mm -mm. work for it. It's mm -mm. literally a tip. And y'all felt so entitled to that. Yep is wild it was mm -hmm. not yours it wasn't anything you worked for it wasn't right. any, yeah it's just and, and also I feel like I mean it would have been bad no matter what but the fact that these were her son's friends and even the son was in on her playing these games with people that he called his friends yeah. it's just really shitty like you gonna let your mama do your friends like that and like like 
see nothing wrong with it. Like I said, even if they would have been strangers who had just pulled up to help out their food truck, they were helping you. Like, cause she they tried were. to say all this stuff about, well, they don't work for me and they don't do this, they don't do that. Keely saw them around you. He did not assume that they was doing anything. He didn't assume the barber was giving free hair because he said that. He yeah, said, I never thought the barber was hair. giving free yeah. hair because I want him to get the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And I think hopefully moving forward, you know, because people were trying to say, well, why didn't he give cash? Why didn't he pay them? There was no way for him to do that. He's not walking around with that much money. That would be so dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you know, he he in of in other situations that are probably very similar, he's done the same thing and it worked because it worked most fine, people yeah. do the right thing. Yeah. He just ran into somebody who was not gonna do the right thing, unfortunately. So yeah. I don't even know how you there. vet this. Like how do you vet like shitty humans? Yeah, because <laughs> it's just know. yeah, you can't really vet this. Yes, yeah, true. It's I mean, yeah, yeah, because he should, especially if he's giving somebody money like that, he should be able to trust that they're going to do the right thing with it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, maybe there's a lesson for them too. But that's just not the world that we live in. So maybe in the future, he will be able to say like directly to somebody like, well, you know, he, he addressed that because he was like, I didn't ask them for their cash app or nothing like that because everybody was on live. Everybody was recording. I didn't want them to be putting their personal information out there. And I wasn't about to get nobody my phone and have them cash out. They set like that. You know, it was a lot of mm -hmm. reasons for why he did it the way he did. He thought this on was top the of most secure way to do coming. it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, he did mm -hmm. everything right in the situation. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. is real. It's just, it just comes down to people being mm -hmm. shitty. Yeah, and we're, yeah. you know, you're gonna come across that. It's, yeah, I don't think he can really do anything or bet anything. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, unfortunately, people are shitty. Yeah, and and shitty and very short sighted too. Mm -hmm. Because that was like, so the same guy who I mentioned, Arlani had to find his TikTok, but he was talking about the whole UMG situation and the greed, and he related yeah. to this situation well. How being short sighted and only thinking about your money today is ruining your future and messing up your mm -hmm. money tomorrow and how both of these situations kind of had that in common because that's 1000 percent what this woman did like she was so pressed about forty eight hundred dollars and she probably would have made that tenfold in the next two weeks because of the key for your fix but she couldn't see that she just saw what was right she in front of her she just was thinking about the bills that she got today that she got to worry about she wasn't thinking about tomorrow mm -hmm. and that sucks for her and you know mm -hmm. they've already tried to change the name of the restaurant and pivot and people are you know review bombing them which i definitely don't agree with i feel like she has got her punishment i feel like having the reverse lucky flea effect and not getting that boom from your business from the key flea effect, i personally think that's punishment enough but you know other people on the internet feel differently and so they are going crazy but just like you do shitty things and whatever comes back to you comes back to you and you don't have no control over that so you know it just is what yeah. it is so mm. crazy crazy i think the food tours are gonna change or end at some point it's too much foolery going around people are getting too greedy people are getting too entitled and i don't think ugh, it's like it's just not it's not how it used to be you know what i'm saying like so many people are have so much awareness of him now the fact that so many restaurants are like begging him to come and they were begging him to come just to act like this is wow i think it's gonna change yeah it, has it to. just sucks that there's probably another struggling restaurant that he didn't get a chance to go to that really could have used it and it got wasted on them yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know what? I pre he has kind of changed his format a little bit. I think he said with the Dallas food tours in particular and moving forward, they were like three different categories of restaurants yeah. that they were going to go to. And mm -hmm. all of them don't fit into this this restaurant needs help bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, and I think it's because of all the foolery that's been going on. You know, that he's not, I mean, he's still making a priority to help restaurants, but he's not going to be able to help as many as probably what he was. Because right. this is only one category of the content that he's making now. So, y'all just act right. Just so act people, right. People can't act right. It don't matter where yeah. you're from. It don't matter where Keith Lee go. There's going to mm -hmm. be people who just cannot act right. Right. It just sucks. That's so true. Do we have time for an update? I know that was of a course. last one. Yeah. Kite what we update? We talked about Kite Baby last uh, Oh, time. yeah. Uh huh. Um, you know, I'd be shopping and I was looking up some Slytherin pajamas. Stop. I saw they have Harry Potter. I ended up on their website too. I saw that. 
I didn't buy them. Don't, don't did not buy them. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but they do have it, and I'm like, damn, y'all had some controversy, and then y'all got Harry Potter shit. Like, how can you make it worse? But um, they did they update. Cute. Mommy it's cute. Pajamas. They it's do. cute. They had some, yeah. um, you know, whole family too. Get your whole fumble, house. Yeah. Fumbling the bag because of greed. Once yeah, again. Once but. again. But they did update their policy. Apparently, after six months now, employees can receive four weeks of paid uh, paner- paternal leave and up to two, 22 weeks of unpaid, totaling okay. six months. And if you're there after a year, you'll receive eight weeks paid and up to 44 weeks unpaid, totaling a year. Wait. I mean, I the- can. Sure. The bar is in the floor. The yeah. bar is in hell in America. And I mean, that's that's not as good as I what I would have hoped, but it's mm-hmm. better than a lot of companies. It's better than how they were. I mean, I think giving somebody 22 weeks of unpaid leave is great on paper, but how many people can afford to not get paid for that long? I mean, only a month. Yeah. I mean, high key, like this is something with just me like if I'm looking for a new employment and I know like maybe in the future I may want to have a child like I'm looking at this stuff too and eight weeks is what that's two months that's not that's not barely because some months have five weeks in it after I potentially if you know I had a c-section with Ashton Mm -hmm been mm-hmm. cut open literally surgically cut open and had a human being came out of me and you're like well you've been here and you know months, what you only get four weeks and i think they that's the and that's the crazy thing too because most daycares won't even take a baby this list of eight weeks old so what it's not a lot of daycares out there that's taking a four week old anyway so what you yeah. supposed to do but i guess that's when the unpaid would kick in but again how many people can afford to take Most more than can. like a couple of weeks off work and just not get paid at all? It's super, it's sad. It's and I sad. get like why the controversy happened because you're legit a baby company. Like you mm-hmm. wouldn't, like I would expect to see 16. I know. 12 even. 12 yeah. is better. You know what I'm saying? Eight is like the absolute bare minimum and four is an absolute joke. After six months, don't come here pregnant about the pop. Please don't, because you ain't getting shit. You're not getting nothing. Exactly. <laughs> You're getting nothing. Yikes. Well, I hope. I mean, it's a little bit better than what they had. They had nothing for anybody under twelve months, apparently. And if you had twelve months, it was only like four weeks or something to pay. But um, so it shout out to the people who already work there, uh, getting a little bit more. Hmm. But you know what? And I, it, okay, because I'll talk about like my own personal situation. So when I had Mason, I worked for a company that shall remain nameless, but we worked it together. We hate them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got very lucky because of where my due date fell, it fell into like well into January. Mm-hmm. But if I would have had Mason early in December, I would have been subject to their old maternal leave policy, yep. which was not nearly as good as the new maternal matern- leave policy. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people who gave birth in December even had the old policy. They didn't even let the new policy kick in for them, even though it kicked in I mean, literally a lot of the people next that, month. that fell into that. Yes. Very, very shitty. And then also, because my husband had started working for that same company, just a couple, I think by the time Mason was born, I think he had been working there for like four or five months. Mm-hmm. He got zero parental leave. Zero parental leave. He had, had to, to use, he had to be there a year. Yes, had mm-hmm. to use the time that he had accumulated, which wasn't much. And they, they wouldn't even allow him to take unpaid leave because they he requested to take some unpaid leave. They gave him zero unpaid days. They said you can literally only take the leave that you have occurred, which was maybe two weeks, I think. And it's like, first of all, like we were working at the same company in the same department where they were highly aware of our situation. And it's like, mm-hmm. nobody even cared about the burden that that put on me having to take care of a newborn by right. myself within after two weeks when I had a perfectly capable spouse who wanted to help me, but had to go to work. And I'm sure they didn't try to do any remote options he just had whatever, whatever remote he had already had. They didn't give any. Yeah, which any back then was maybe a day a week. It was like a day or two. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's like 
it's like companies, companies are shitty. It, it always ends up that companies are so easily able to help people and they don't because that would not have done it wouldn't have hurt them at all to, to I mean make at that minimum to allow him to be remote yeah fully just allow him to be fully remote for a couple of additional weeks even two more weeks would have made a huge difference nope you gotta be here just because and I feel like they know that if they make a concession for you, they feel like they're going to have to make it for everybody. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. Help out a it family. It makes a healthier workplace. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I never... It turnover. Exactly. And exactly. And because it's like, I never forgot that situation. I always held on to that. And when it was time for me to chuck the deuces at that company... I mm-hmm. had no hesitation to do that because I had zero loyalty to them. Because I was like, y'all don't give a damn about me and my family. And y'all made that very clear. Like, I knew it, yeah. but you made it abundantly clear. <laughs> exactly. So why should I? Like, and so yeah. it's like, it's crazy that these companies still expect like some type of loyalty when they do people like that. Oh, let you go in a heartbeat, but we require two weeks. That's wild. And it's like wild. you said, in that situation, y'all know us. We both Literally. work here. Both it ain't a situation here. where, like, you know, his you got wife. some hypothetical yeah. spy, spouse somewhere yeah. that you ain't never seen. You don't even know she's pregnant. And even y'all then, it still would be wrong. But yeah. They saw my big belly walking around the office three or four <laughs> days a week. They absolutely do. They absolutely do. Wild. But yeah, yep. that, that was an update. I know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, on that note, <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, y'all. So we are back and I am so excited uh, to be working with Archer and Olive again. I mentioned this at the top of the show, um, but they will be having a Black Creators Connect panel just like they did last year that I will be hosting on February the 27th. Myra will be a panelist on the panel. So will Laura, so will Jerrica, so will Franklin. I am mm-hmm. so, so excited to talk to you guys and get you all's perspectives on being a Black creator. And I hope that y'all join us and check it out. It's going to be really cool. Yes, do we already have links for that? We can throw no. show no- oh, Okay. We don't. But we'll put a reminder <laughs> a reminder <laughs> about it in yeah, the show notes. In our socials too, so follow yes. us for sure. Uh so you don't miss it. It is going to be over on YouTube, correct? Mm-hmm. It'll be on okay. the Archer and I love YouTube page. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, definitely easy, follow easy. them. Um, so you don't miss. Turn that mm-hmm. notification bell on. It's always a good time. I always love these panels. Um, yeah. So I'm really, really excited for it. Me too. Me too. I think it's going to be really, really good. Um, also, uh, shout out to Plum Paper. Uh, this episode is also sponsored by Plum Paper. And they have their 14th anniversary sale going on as this sh- episode is airing. Mm-hmm. So make sure y'all check that out. Um, even if you have a 2024 planner, if it's not working out, pivot. You ain't got to stick with it. Head over to plumpaper.com and get your new planner. And if you don't need a planner, get a notebook. Get some. They got accessories. They got stickers. They got lots of stuff. Yeah, I use their notebooks for uh, planners and wine stuff. Mm-hmm. When they sent this, it was so cute. Like on oh, Thursdays, so we uh, drink cute. wine. Yeah, it's super, cute. Um, super cute. So, yeah, if you just need a notebook, definitely check them out. Mm-hmm. Ton of don't they have those custom stickers, too? Did you yes, them? I yeah. did. Yeah, they have some customized stickers. And also with their notebooks, you can get like the add-ons that they have, like the home section and work and coloring pages. Oh, you can yeah, get all that stuff added to your notebook. And you can also add more because like when you put it in a planner, uh, I think it, once you add like more than like two or three add-ons, it gets super bulky. But mm-hmm. you can add like up to seven in a notebook and it'll still be a decent size for you to like carry around and stuff like that. And that is available in the multiple sizes. So definitely check that out. Out, get your customized notebook, planner, whatever you need, and shout out to Plum Paper. I might have to do that. I ain't think yeah. about doing that because yeah, mm-hmm. you can only add on so much to mm-hmm. a planner. You meet that page limit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a notebook, you got a lot more space. Hmm. Interesting. So y'all got choices. Use our link in the show notes. Yes. Sorry. Use our link too. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> get 20 percent off um and i have no idea the plum paper has been around for 14 years that's crazy yeah that is insane mm-hmm. but shout out to them that's why when it comes yeah. to business and sweetly season has to learn this the hard way you got to be thinking long term you cannot 
worry about short-term games. You have to think about long-term setting your business up so it'll be around for 14 years, like on paper. Just saying. Period. Period. Now, I guess this is one of her business mistakes, Sweetly Season, but ah, uh, that was a huge mm. one, girl. A huge on a huge platform. Yeah, in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but yeah, let's check in on our 2024 planners. Myra, how is everything going with your 2024 planners? Have you made any changes? Um, are you so happy with your lineup? What's what's the tea? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much still happy with it. Um, I am currently using the Han. Uh, yes. <laughs> the way you can Holy never remember. The name. And I think this is why it's working for me because I'm not tied into like what it is and how to yes. explain it to people. Like it's yeah, sure. Honestly, it's it's just a planner that works for me. And mm-hmm. I, it's funny because I have a made a whole platform off of like planners and stuff mm-hmm. and now i'm just at this point where i'm just like as long as it work you know yeah um, same. same so but it, it has been working out i really love the uh daily pages in the back mm-hmm. um i've seen a really cool uh tiktok from oh god i don't remember the person's name but y'all introduced me to her mm-hmm. uh you and julie Okay. Um, so maybe I'll try and find a link or something to mm-hmm. add to the show notes. But she had different things that you can do with the weeklies. Mm. Um, and if you don't use them, because honestly, I just don't. I have my weeks, too, that I do want to go. And that's more like what I use for weekly stuff. And not a lot of stuff is going on. Yeah. So I don't really use the weekly in the Hobonichi. Right. So I've been thinking about doing that. So some of the ideas was like reading trackers or you know different yeah. type of trackers and stuff like that to um, oh I love it yeah to use it for but I may do that um but honestly I've just been using the monthly and it mm-hmm. is yeah and I love it I you know what that's so funny because I've mostly been using the weeklies and the dailies I really don't have a huge use for my monthlies I just been making them cute decking them out and just writing some plans for the month but I definitely am not going to that those pages every day but my weekly pages and my daily pages I am using those every day and I love it do you use the hourly part of it too Mm-mm. you just write it no attention I just yeah. write Mm-hmm. I yeah. just write on both of them. I just ignore the hours because honestly, that's why the Hobonichi cousin had never worked for me before because I was trying to use the hour, the um the hourlies. I was trying to make mm-hmm. the hourlies happen, and they it just was not, happen, they yeah. wasn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> it was not happening. Um, so yeah, I'm going. Mine is going really good too. I'm really enjoying it. And the thing about journaling is, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Mm-hmm. So journaling for the past month it's just gotten easier and easier. And I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm really, really enjoying it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to have like it all in one place to kind of go back to is what I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to at the end of the mm-hmm. year. Because like you, you just forget about stuff like. That's so true. much stuff happened in January with like different announcements, mm-hmm. like just even like little comments. I've printed off like comments that I've gotten from keeping yeah. people on um, content and stuff just to kind of remind myself. And I don't know, it's just something cool about being in something that you can flip back through at the end of the year. I I'm totally, forward to. totally, totally agree. And also like being able to record just the mundane, normal things that happen in my day to day life. Cause like you said, like, cute stuff happens with my daughter she'll say something really sweet like all that stuff is not going to stick into my memory but having somewhere to like write it down and record it and not waiting till I have a big trip or a big big event to just write about my life is something I'm gonna really really look forward to being able to look back on this year and also I'm using my Canon Ivy um not sponsored but it should be but I've been using my photo printer more than I ever have since I got Mm -hmm. it because I have got new uh photos or the paper the, the the film yeah. yeah and I probably had that film for like since I got it and hadn't mm-hmm. went through 10 of them and now I'm flying through it because I'm just you know taking pictures of whatever and putting it in my planner and I'm really loving like I've already looked back on January a few different times and I'm just like oh I'm so happy I wrote that down because I would have forgot about it so yeah yeah I, yeah, I love, I love it. it I've been thinking about getting one of those thermal printers shout out to um Estella she has one and she used it a lot Mm. Um, and her planners and I'm like I think I might get that one 
less expensive to buy those paper photo papers. Yes. It's not as bulky as the photo paper. Not as bulky. So exactly. I'm thinking about doing that because I do like to Me print too. out like comments and stuff, stuff that doesn't need color. You yes, know? exactly. So, um, that's a good I idea. About getting it. It's like 35 bucks. It's not expensive at all. Oh, that's so, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, I've been enjoying it in the weeks. Nothing special going on. Yeah. Or you need that you need that thermal printer to print out screenshots from our group chat like you did. Mm-hmm. I had to put week. that on a photo. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all didn't listen to the last episode, I don't know why y'all skipped it. That's that's on y'all because that, I know. that episode is freaking hilarious. 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 <laughs> but yeah, planning has been going so good. And honestly, I think the main thing that I can attribute it for why it's going so well. Is because I'm not sharing it. I know that sounds crazy mm-hmm. being in this community that's so hyper-focused on sharing our planners and sharing our spreads and all that, but just doing it truly. This is the first time I have planned like truly for myself since being in this community because, you know, I want to be able to write like my unfiltered like thoughts and opinions and feelings without worrying about what somebody on the internet is going to think about it or going to say about it or how they're going to dissect it or what random gossip site is going to be gossiped about. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't do that. I couldn't write how I've been writing and being so open if it was for other people's eyes. You know what I'm saying? I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think even if you are planning and making content, you still have that little inkling in the back of your mind that somebody may zoom mm-hmm. into this. So you may just do like before the pins or you may, yeah. you know, limit what you want to say or dumb it down or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, be like, oh, I'm not going to put this in yet. Take a picture and never come mm-hmm. back to put it in. Yeah. Um, and like you said, like not creating content around it has been very freeing. It's it's funny because like early on in this um, content cre- creation career mm-hmm. in the planner community, it was something that I would like kind of side eye people where they said they just had like a content planner and stuff that they just do for content. Mm-hmm. But now I get it. Yeah, I totally get it. Like, yeah. Because you want to serve your audience yeah. and you want to give them things that they want to see, especially if you're a planner, a content mm-hmm. creator, you know your audience that you built wants to see your planner, but you want to be able to plan for yourself too. And how do you do both of those things? Because I think that the majority of people who are going to see these pictures don't have bad intentions or mm-hmm. and aren't just looking just to be nosy and to be all in your Yeah, business. they're looking for but, inspiration for sure. Exactly. But there are, there is a... a there is a group of people in the planner community, unfortunately, who just want to just know every detail of your life or have things about you to gossip about and just mm-hmm. really are invested in doing that. And you don't want to be giving those people nothing. You don't want to give those people no crimes. You want to keep those people big mad. Not for free. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That is the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, us this year within the past, like, six months or so with the podcast kind of stepping back from being solely planner too has kind of mm-hmm. helped which mm-hmm. is really funny to to think that that's what we had to do to really enjoy our planners which is just wild it's and crazy. that's what we had to do to really enjoy our podcast well i can't this is hilarious mm-hmm. i love this for us <laughs> i do too i do too <laughs> honestly there are ways to show your real planner without showing your real planner like because i follow some people on tiktok who journal and they just have like a super quick flip of a journal where you really just see like the pictures and something that granted is if you really thirsty and desperate you could take a screenshot yeah. and zoom in but if you're doing that i feel really bad for you um but you it's know i feel like photo. yeah exactly they're showing it without really showing it and they're what they're really doing is talking about the process more so than showing what they're doing, which I think is super helpful and beneficial and has given me a lot of ideas for what I can do with my own planner mm-hmm. and journal as well. Um, so there, there are definitely ways you just got to get creative on if you are, if you do want to show your real plans, how to show it without showing your business and how to show it without having to filter yourself. Um, but like you said, or like you literally if have a filter on. <laughs> Literally have a filter on. <laughs> or like you said, I mean, I don't think having a content planner is a bad idea mm-hmm. at all. If you're a content creator and you do this, you know, regularly, I think it's okay to have a, a planner just to show you the content. Yeah, I one thousand percent agree. I think it's just we have to take a step away of just 
our content just being a flat lay of the planner. Like mm-hmm. you have to get a little bit creative with it. Yep. And I think the stuff that I resonate more, and it may be because I know how to put stickers on my planners at this point, you know, I don't need yeah. to be a flat lay. Right. But I resonate more with people doing the process type thing. Like yep. this is what I'm doing or even have like a story time as like they're getting stuff together for journaling or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even have to ever see what they're writing in it. Like Exactly. So it's just getting so creative, true. but yep. oh, I'm keeping my, my side comments to myself. See, you did this last time where you said- you I'm writing it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, my pet peeve is when people be like, I'm going to tell you something later. And then later comes and they forget. And Myra is great at that. Okay. I will forget. She be driving me crazy. She be driving me crazy. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of be nice. I hope that just yeah, resonate right. with some people who are um, content creators, I guess, or mm-hmm. may have been in the past and took a step back. Um, there is other ways to kind of go about the planner world kind of yep. content. And I truly hope it's funny because like what I said in the beginning of the show, like I've been like commenting on people and seeing mm-hmm. people. Who, and those are people that were like strictly like flat lay type people and just you know, giving them the push, like, Hey, I see what you're doing. I really right. enjoy it. Like you're moving in the right direction. I really want to see the community prosper and grow to more than just flat lays. I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. And I want people to just like do what works for them, like mm-hmm. truly what works for them. Cause sometimes other people's stuff can just start to cloud your, your mm-hmm. mind. And like, you, you're just so fixated on making sure it's aesthetic, making sure it's interesting, making sure my handwriting is perfect because all these people are going to be looking at it and dissecting it. And one it's never going to be perfect. And two, the whole point of planet is doing something for you, doing something that makes your life more organized, makes your life better, makes you be able to notate these special moments in your life. So yeah. if you aren't your main focus in your planning, you're doing something wrong. That you doing something wrong. Yeah. The planners are tools, not personality traits. Yep. Exactly. And I mean, now I want to see. That's why I love IG stories so much because the main thing I see in IG stories are people's personalities and them talking about their lives and things like that. Like we are just so much more than just planning. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need to see your planner to learn about you and your personality. I want to learn about you and your personality, like behind the planner. So that's why I love planner conferences because we get to see the people in in public out here. Yeah. Not behind a keyboard. For sure. Yeah. Again, planner mm-hmm. is a tool to connect us. Yep. So, I, yeah. Exactly. Yep. But on that mm-hmm. note, we've reached the end of this episode. We hope that y'all enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Make sure y'all are following me and Myra on all the different social media channels. We're both pretty active on threads and that has been a lot of fun for us. Also make sure you're following Planners of Wine on the social media channels. Check out our Patreon if you haven't already. We're doing lots of fun things over there, giving lots of extra content and y'all can hear from us in real time um, now that the show is on a slightly different schedule. Yeah. Um, if you miss us so much, join Patreon. That's it. It's like that too. Like I love that. Can we get down a shirt? If you miss us so much, join Low key? Patreon. That's a good idea. Let's write that down. <laughs> if you miss us, join Patreon. <laughs> Joy, I'm, I'm looking forward to the bonus episode this month. So um, yeah, come, come hang out with us. We have a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, if you join once this drops you'll be able to join in the live episode recording the following week so perfect timing but yeah perfect timing fun time love chatting with y'all hope y'all enjoy yeah and i have a really cool idea for our bonus episode we'll see if we do it but i was i wrote it at the top of our show notes if you're gonna check it out and if y'all want to know what we're gonna talk about perhaps (laughs) on our bonus episode join us on patreon we're experts on this topic we are. We very, we very much are. Yes. And <laughs> so something special for you guys. Uh, we did a really cool episode of our um, Patreon exclusive show Shots mm-hmm. with our friend, Dr. Terry. Uh, she is a licensed um, family and adolescent therapist. And I think we're going to release that episode on the regular feed this month because it was so amazing. Obviously, we want to give our Patreon peeps first dibs at that episode. And we don't put all the shots episodes on the regular feed, but I think this is an extra special one. Mm-hmm. So definitely look out for that. And 
if y'all want more of that, absolutely join the Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. By the time y'all hearing this, I've probably seen the little sneak peek of that Mm -hmm. audio, but yeah, Yeah. definitely look forward to that this month. Excited for y'all to hear it, but yeah. Me too. Me too. But yeah, Myra, did you have anything else for the peeps? Uh, No, join me over on Twitch. Apparently I'm an affiliate now. Yeah. Let's Uh, go. Run up the numbers. (laughs) Pay her her things. Yeah. You can find it wherever you find me so come come hang out with us we get shit done over on twitch and we have some fun yay thank you guys so much for listening we will talk to y'all soon bye guys hey grapevine thanks for listening to this week's episode planners and wine is hosted by megan p and myra p and is edited by jonathan f We'd like to thank our Planners and Wine patrons for their continued support and engagement. With special thanks to Daniel M. and Lisa F., moderators of our Patreon-exclusive Facebook group. For more amazing content, please visit plannersandwine.com or find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash plannersandwine. You can also find us on all social media platforms at Planners and Wine.